Hello and welcome to the final episode for week one. We are down to the nitty gritty guys, down to the bone. And we're going to break down this slate here in our final thoughts. We got lineups for cash, GPP. We're going to break down position by position. And uh, we're just ready to go, guys. So let's do it. We already went over cash game tips early in the week. I uh, just thought I would go uh, over it just a little bit. You want a 2.5x uh, your players you pick salary to get to uh, 150. Quarterback flexibility. Um, cheap quarterbacks, mid-range quarterbacks, uh, game flow running backs, uh, running backs that are at home, favored. And then you get your deeper wideout statistics with like the uh, the metrics and uh, good pass catching running uh, wide receivers where they get plenty of targets with their A dot. And uh, high floor players such as guys like Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Monty Adams, that nature. So, let's move on to cash game quarterbacks. We start out with uh, quarterback Jalen Hurts at 6,400. Guys, he's probably going to be in most lineups. Uh, great upside. It's a great game environment. He's underpriced for... The potential he could have. He could give you Kyler Murray type numbers on the ground. Uh, he's not that good of a thrower with the football. But he is definitely somebody that you're going to want to have in your uh, cash games. If you don't want to get super cheap like uh, I have, you'll see in a little bit. But uh, Jalen Hurts is definitely an option. And um, I could say he is the best option. Then we move on to Joe Burrow at 5,700. Guys, Burrow, <clears throat> he's coming out pretty nice in the numbers. Uh, I got him coming up to about 20.2 fantasy points. He's looking really good for week one in a great environment. Uh, great cheap wide receiver options. Uh, definitely somebody you want to get to. Uh, I believe Minnesota's front seven and their linebacking core are back in full throttle, but I'm not really confident in their secondary still. They got a lot of questions at their secondary, and aging Patrick Peterson, um, they've lost some uh, corners and safeties in the off season to free agency. Um, just not someone I'm very confident about. Uh, and Joe Burrow, I think... People are underselling him a little bit, saying that he's still a little iffy about his uh, leg injury. He suffered uh, early last season. Uh, he hasn't played football in a while. Um, but I really like Joe Burrow, and he's definitely somebody I want to get to, uh, not just in cash games, uh, but also in uh, GPPs as well. And uh, that's one thing I want to cover with you guys. We're going over cash game plays right now at each position. But these guys are also tournament viable. Um, I, you got to be able to differentiate. And you got to know how to set a lineup. Which we went over in great detail in um, our first look last week. So if you want to skim through that, go ahead. Um, this is not a strategy show. This is uh, a player show I'm basically giving you my player pool into week one and now I really want to move on to Mac Jones guys best value at quarterback by a lot um 4400 he's projected to score 16.3 DraftKings points which isn't the best but it's not the worst and it can get you to a lot of other stars and studs, uh, when you're making your lineup, it can get you to Christian McCaffrey. It can get you to uh, uh, Devontae Adams, Dalvin Cook, uh, whoever 
you like, this guy's going to get you there. You got the quarterbacks and you got the cheap wide receivers that are going to help you get there. Um, I really like Mac Jones. He's probably my favorite out of these three. I can understand y'all, any of y'all going to these three quarterbacks, but if it were up to me, I would be going with Mac Jones. So now, let's move on to running back. At running back for cash games, look guys, it's really simple. Christian McCaffrey should just be an automatic, he, he should just be automatically placed into the flex or the running back position. He should be in your lineup regardless. He's the best play on this slate. Um, he's projected to score about 25 and a half fantasy points, and that's higher than any quarterback on the slate, higher than any receiver on the slate. Um, he's gonna wreck havoc week one, and I'm gonna have him. I'm gonna have a lot of them. Then we get to Dalvin Cook. Look, guys, I said how much I like the game environment for Cincinnati. Uh, when we were talking about Joe Burrow just a little while ago. But I also love Dalvin Cook and his game environment. Look, guys, this Cincinnati's defense is not a very good one. And Dalvin Cook is somebody that's going to uh, exploit it. And Mike Zimmer's going to exploit it. Don't get fooled. Yeah, they got Justin Jefferson and they got Adam Thielen, but... This is a run-first offense, and they're going to make it a priority to get Dalvin Cook involved. Then we get on to Alvin Kamara. I really like Alvin Kamara, guys. Uh, he's at a great price point at 8600 uh, He's going to be the bell cow, but not in the normal way you would think for a running back. No Michael Thomas, no problem. Last year... Without Michael Thomas, in like six games, I believe, he was averaging 31 fantasy points. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on when we're talking about running backs. Uh, I really like Alvin Kamara. I really want uh, exposure to him, not just in cash games, but he is definitely someone that you could play in a cash game. Then we move on to Aaron Jones at 6,800 for the Green Bay Packers. Same reasons why I like Alvin Kamara is like Aaron Jones in this game environment is going to be a big deal. I mean, Packers are uh, favorites. Um, so that means Aaron Jones is going to get some carries to slow the game down. Uh, he's going to be heavily involved. When running backs are favorites, they're usually heavily involved. Uh, Aaron Jones can do a little bit of both. He can catch the football, and he sure can run the football. Um, he's projected to do about 17.1 uh, DraftKings points, and he's definitely somebody I want in my lineup as I'm preparing for week one. Um, great cash game play. Don't know if I'm going to get to him in cash, but uh, somebody to definitely consider, especially if you want – Someone like Jalen Hurts at quarterback, you got to get into the 6K range to uh, to be a little more viable to get Jalen Hurts. Okay, now we move on to Joe Mixon at 6,200. I really like Joe Mixon this week. and I see the ownership coming up on him a little bit. Uh, last time I checked, I believe he was like 14% owned. Uh, but that's more for a GPP thing. You don't really look at ownership in a sense for cash, but you do want to look at ownership to kind of get a perspective on what people like. Joe Mixon, I thought when prices first came out that he could be a little overlooked just because of how cheap the pass catchers were, how cheap Joe Burrow was, and I thought maybe that they were going to give uh, I mean, Joe Mixon was just going to go overlooked. But that's not the case, guys. Uh, he's getting some ownership in tournaments, cash games. He's not somebody that I'm going towards. But like I said, if you're trying to get Jalen Hurts, if you're trying to get Joe Burrow, 
you might have to go a little further down to get to uh, Joe Mixon, but definitely someone I like. And I'm going to have some of Joe Mixon. Then we get to James Robinson. And I just realized we didn't put the price there. He's 6400 playing the Houston Texans. Uh, the terrible Houston Texans defense. I really like James Robinson at 6400 uh, He He could be uh, the play for cash games. I mean... Jaguars are favorites, of course. Um, they got a rookie quarterback, so they don't want to toss him out there and have him throw a whole lot. James Robinson could definitely be a factor for the uh, Jaguars. Uh, I would roster him if I were y'all. I mean, can't get much better than that. Then you get to Mike Davis, who I really fell in love with about two weeks ago, and then Wayne Gallman got signed. Um... Look, there's not a lot of value at running back after Mike Davis. Um, we got some guys ahead of him that we're going to go over when we start discussing tournament lineups. But he's really the cheapest, best value, in my opinion. I mean, in the 4K range, you got guys like Chase Edmonds and uh, Javante Williams and James Conner. Uh, I don't really feel good about those guys. This is the cheapest price point where I would be definitely comfortable in rostering somebody. Uh, Mike Davis, he's still got a good value with Wayne Gallman uh, as his backup. I know they're, they're going to play Wayne Gallman a little bit, but I don't expect them to play him as much since he's still learning the offense. He, he just got in there. Uh, so Mike Davis is still a good option if you need to get there. Definitely a uh he's a home team favorite uh, they got a pretty high point total i really like mike davis for cash games now let's move on to wide receivers at wide receiver for cash games we got the man Devonte adams guys best receiver in the league last year for a lot of reasons um, Aaron Rodgers was the MVP. Monte Adams was his best wide receiver. Uh, he's gonna get targets. I I think he can get anywhere from seven to twelve targets in this game, maybe even more. Um, he gets a pretty good amount of yards and he gets targeted in the red zone. Uh, I don't see how you can look past Devonte Adams this week whatsoever in cash tournaments, whatever. He is the best receiver on my board but when we move on to Calvin Ridley he's somebody that I think could sneak be very sneaky and maybe possibly be the best receiver on the slate um, he's got a lot of upside and I am not scared of this uh, Philly secondary whatsoever Darius Slay he's a decent corner but he's not going to be able to Keep Calvin Ridley out. I really like Calvin Ridley uh, for week one. Definitely someone to roster. Then we move on to Stephon Diggs. He's kind of just catapulted in the uh, rankings and projections for me uh, in the last couple days. I wasn't really high on Buffalo uh, coming in when the salaries came out. Schedules came out. I saw Pittsburgh as maybe a threat, but I really just dove into some research here. And Stefan Diggs, I think he could definitely uh, get you there and draft Kings points. He's going to get targets. He's the alpha receiver on this team. I don't think anyone's going to out target Stefan Diggs. Uh, big playmaker. Uh, I really like Stefan Diggs. They are playing a Pittsburgh defense, but. I'm going for it. I really like Stephon Diggs. I'm playing him this week. Uh, definitely a cash game option. He's a top three point projected wide receiver. I believe he's projected to score about uh, 21.2 DraftKings points. Um, very excited to play him. But here's someone that a lot of people aren't excited to play. And I just don't understand why. Keenan Allen at 6,900 is just going completely 
overlooked. Uh, he is getting going to get targets, guys, all the time. 10, 12, 14 targets. This guy catches, and he's going to get opportunities. I know they're playing uh, the Washington football team this week. Don't be scared of that defense. Keenan Allen is going to get targets. He's going to be involved. Uh, definitely a way to get different in your cash game lineup. You don't want to be simple and basic with your stuff. If you want to get different, if you feel like your lineup is too much of the norm this week, Keenan Allen is a good way to get different in your cash games, and he'll get you there. Now we move on to Terry McLaurin. Another guy that's going to get you targets, uh, Curtis Samuel, I believe, is ruled out. And uh, there's not really nobody behind him that's going to threaten him in targets other than Logan Thomas at the tight end. Um, I love Terry McLaurin. I think he's going to get you there at 6,400. This could be the cheapest we see him all year. He's going to get opportunities. Ryan Fitzpatrick loves to throw the football and in Washington, and there's no better pass catcher to throw the ball to than Terry McLaurin. Now we move on to T. Higgins, and T. Higgins is probably the best 4K value. From the 5K to 4K range, I really think T. Higgins is the best value. Uh, he's projected to score about 14.3 DraftKings points. Uh, Great game environment like I talked about when we were discussing Joe Burrow. He's going to get you there. Then we move on to Corey Davis at 4,900. Uh, before I made this video, I uh, saw Jamison Crowder being rolled out for week one uh, due to COVID. So uh, fire up some Corey Davis, guys. Uh, he's definitely somebody that wants to go out and prove he's a number one. And uh, Zach Wilson, what I, from what I've heard from preseason training camp, uh, these guys, Zach Wilson and Corey Davis, have built a great rapport. Playing a Carolina defense that wasn't so hot last year, um, I could see a version of this game where Corey Davis is going to get heavily involved. Uh, definitely an option if you need him. Then we get to Brandon Ayuk. I like Brandon Ayuk probably more than most. Uh, when you watch videos, you don't really hear a lot of people singling out Brandon Ayuk. Um, they're going to be heavy favorites in this Detroit game, um, and they got to get out early, or supposedly they're going to get out early. If they get out early, I could definitely see it being Jimmy G targeting Ayuk. I know a lot of people think Raheem Mostart's going to uh, just rush through this uh, Detroit defense, but I think... Brandon Ayuk's going to be heavily evolved in the first half. He's got to get you a touchdown to get there, and I think he can. Definitely someone to roster to get a little different in your cash games. Someone I like at 5,700. Give him a shot if you want to get a little different. Then we move on to Marquez Callaway, who is obviously the best 3K value on the slate. 3,400 is just way too cheap for this guy. He's the number one receiver. Uh, he'll probably be second behind Alvin Kamara in targets and receptions. Uh, he doesn't have to get you a touchdown to get uh, 3x's value. He's going to he's gonna eat, guys. I know Green Bay's defense is pretty good, but it doesn't matter when it comes to fantasy football. Guys are going to get targeted if they're out there, and Marcus, Marquez Callaway is going to be out there. We move on to Michael Pittman at 4,100. Uh, T.Y. Hilton's out for week one. Um, he's going to get his share of targets. 4,100, it's going to be hard for him not to meet that salary at 3X. I really like Michael Pittman. I know it's going to be a slow game, but it's, it's something that you got to be willing to target, and I like him more than uh, some of those lower 3K guys that we'll talk about in GPPs. He's someone you can single, uh, be a good single play. You don't have to stack him with Carson Wentz. You can just put him out there as a single option. Very good option at 4,100. I'll play him. Then we get to Marvin Jones 
I've talked about Marvin Jones. Ever since the prices came out, Marvin Jones has just been my guy. I hope it doesn't end up burning in my face. I really like Marvin Jones at 3600 He's He's a great get player. I really hope he gets us there in a salary, a 3X. I think he can do it. Uh, like I've said before, Urban Meyer's going to make it a point to get him involved. His former uh, offensive coordinator is... Uh, his former offensive coordinator in Detroit is the offensive coordinator of the Jaguars and Darren Bevel. Uh, just looks great upside for uh, Marvin Jones. And those are my cash game wide receivers. Now we move. On. Now we move on to cash game tight ends. T.J. Hawkinson at forty nine hundred is a great price point. A lot of people aren't talking about him being the cash game tight end that they need. Um, but look, this team is going to be down. They're going to be playing from behind. And who do you think they're going to throw the ball to most? It's going to be this guy, TJ Hawkinson. Jared Goff at quarterback, he, he's got he's to throw the He's going to have to throw the ball. They're not going to be able to run a lot. TJ Hawkinson, I think, can meet this price point. Uh, he's projected to score 12.8 DraftKings points. I'm real excited to play him. He's going to be my cash game tight end this week. Then we move on to Kyle Pitts, who's the poster boy favorite tight end at cat for cash games. Guys, I would just call. I would just pause for a second here with Kyle Pitts. I think he's going to be a great NFL tight end, but it is week one. He is a rookie. I mean. I'm going to have him some in tournaments, of course, but I'm just not sold on playing him in cash games. You can play him if you want. He'll be high on. A lot of people are going to have him, so it shouldn't really matter if uh, you don't have him. Or, I mean, it shouldn't really matter if you do have him because a lot of other people will. So that will just be uh, a tie there for most people. But I like TJ Hawkinson. I think he has a higher ceiling than Kyle Pitts. And a better floor. Then we move on to Logan Thomas. We just said Curtis Samuel, the wide receiver from uh, the Washington football team, is out. Which means good things for Terry McLaurin and Logan Thomas. Uh, I think Logan Thomas is uh, probably uh, going to be the odd man out for most people. Just like TJ Hawkinson. Uh, I, I see that as a mistake though. As the week's going on. More and more people are getting on this hype train for uh, Kyle Pitts. But TJ Hawkinson and Logan Thomas are both great plays, and I think they're better plays than Kyle Pitts. And that's something you should think about when you're constructing your uh, head-to-heads or 50-50s. You want to play guys to get a little different. You don't want to be completely the same. And that's a way to get different with Logan Thomas. Now we move on to my final lineup for cash games. At quarterback, I got Mac Jones. At running back, Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey. Guys, those are just, you're going to have to get there this week with the value. You're you're not probably not going to see value like this again all season long. So you got to take advantage of it. If you can get Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey in your lineup, you're most likely going to get uh, over 150 points, and that's the goal. Um, so definitely liking Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. Then we get to T. Higgins. He's going to be high on. I like him. I think he's the best play in the 5K to 4K range. Definitely someone you got to attack. Then we get to Marquez Callaway. Guys, he's he's just the best value on the slate. Him and Marvin Jones are really neck and neck, but I like Marquez Callaway and I also like Marvin Jones at 3600. Great way to get these high-priced guys in Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. These low-priced players are going to get you there. Their salary is way too low 
for the work that they're going to get in the target range. And then we move on to tight end, TJ Hawkinson. I, I really like TJ Hawkinson. I can see myself, though, I will say this. I can see myself possibly changing my mind and moving to uh, Logan Thomas with this uh, Curtis Samuel news that's came out. We got him. I got to reaffirm that he is going to be out, but if, that could be the only thing I change in this lineup is moving uh, TJ Hawkinson to Logan Thomas. Then we get to Devontae Adams at A300. Y'all know it. He's just a great play, and you got to play him in your cash games. We get to these cheap guys that get to guys like Devontae Adams, that get to guys like Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. It's just a must play. And then I picked the Falcons defense. Um, if you go around and look at projections, their projections are super high. Um, they're playing Jalen Hurts. They got a bad offensive line. They're going to get to the quarterback, hopefully get some turnovers. I like the Falcons upside. Um, I don't like study defenses way too hard. I know we didn't discuss defense for cash games, but later on we will discuss defense as a whole for tournaments and cash games at the end of the video. But that's my cash lineup, uh, guys. TJ Hawkinson is probably the only big question mark I got. I could switch to Logan Thomas, but other than that, I'm keeping this core. And I hope you guys like it, and I hope you guys use it because it's... Uh, it's a pretty good one. But any of these guys that I mentioned, from quarterback all the way down to tight end, uh, they're playable in cash games. Don't feel like you have to use this lineup. Get a little different. That's all I got to say. Because it would suck for you to have to tie uh, a head-to-head -head or, or just be real uh stagnant and be the same as other players uh, in your 50 50s if you want to get different do some different stuff but this is what i'm going with now we go on to gpps i'm not going to go over all this again like i said in my last video in the video before that one i really went deep into GPP tips, but we'll just go over the titles again. Draft a boomer bust quarterback, and it's usually the high priced ones. Uh, create solid quarterback wide receiver stacks with a run back option. Focus on upside. Um, focus on games with high point totals. Slot a vo high volume receiver in the flex. That's something you don't have to do, but it's something that's very viable and has helped me a lot over the years. So I suggest y'all do it, and we'll go over the receivers in a little bit. Draft some uh, players with low percentage ownership. Um, look, guys, you got to look at the ownership when you're going through GPPs. You can't afford to get to high owned guys, but you also want to get the low volume uh, guy, the low own guys as well uh, we'll go over that when we get to my uh, final GPP lineup check Vegas odds for high over unders um, get a high turnover defense we'll go over that in a little bit the smaller the contest the better guys single entries 300 people or less is where I like to go I could see maybe like 400 or less 500 or less but that's the limit um I only play one multi enter contest other than my three maxes, and it's that 50 cent 150 lineups. I play that, I make 150 lineups every week. Uh, and that's just something that I do to help me see more uh, options to get the best lineup. So make your 150 lineups. Use them in the 50 cent. I know it's $75, but you'll get better outcomes out of your lineups that you play in your single entries. 
by making these 150 lineups because you can use your top ranked lineups to go in those single entries. It's just my advice. And that kind of just sums up what I just said with the 150s. You got to have reliable data, base projections, and ownership to go off of. If you don't have that, you're not going to be successful, guys. Don't even play GPPs if you're not going to have any of this stuff. Let's get to quarterbacks now. And guys, started off with Josh Allen. I've really just started falling in love with Josh Allen in the last two or three days. Uh, he definitely wasn't on my radar uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Uh, he's definitely somebody that's just kind of popped in projections, popped in ownership. Definitely somebody I want to have a part of. Uh, He's the best fantasy quarterback in the league last year. Uh, could be a top three or five this year. You got to get to Josh Allen this week. It, there's just a lot that lines up that just makes it feel right when you're making lineups for him. You look at his projection. Uh, I believe he's at like 24.1 DraftKings points for projection. He's the second projected highest scoring uh, QB this week. Um, definitely somebody I want a part of. He's got some good stacking options. And uh, Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders. Um, good run back options with the Steelers. And Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris, uh, Chase Claypool, Juju Smith-Schuster. Good game environment. I know that he's playing a tough defense, but I really don't think that matters, and I'm going to go all for it with Josh Allen. Then we move on to Patrick Mahomes. Guys, I've talked about Patrick Mahomes a lot in my last few videos, but my rise for Josh Allen is kind of lowering my likeness for uh, Patrick Mahomes. But as of right now, I think I'm going to have some Patrick Mahomes in my single entries and three maxes. He might, he's possibly going to be my highest known quarterback. If I can't get enough Josh Allen lineups, uh, Patrick Mahomes could definitely end up being my highest known quarterback in my 150s. It's the highest point total game, great game environment, something I really want to get a part of. He's got great stacking options in Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, Nicole Hardman, uh, the Marcus Robinson, Brian, Byron Pringle. Um, he's just best quarterback in the league, and I'm going to get a part of it. Then we move on to Kyler Murray at 7,600. Guys, I'm just psyched for this game against Tennessee. Uh, I want every little bits and pieces of this game on both sides. As you see, Ryan Tannehill is under Kyler Murray. This game environment is going to be great. Kyler Murray has the great rushing upside. He can throw the ball. He's got new weapons. Um, and A.J. Green and Rondell Moore. It's time to get excited about Kyler Murray. I really think he's going to take that next step to MVP status. And what a great way to start it out playing the Tennessee Titans and Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill, 6,500. I really like this game. And Ryan Tannehill has got... Great pass catching, stacking options, and A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, Anthony Fersker. Uh, I'm even comfortable with uh, stacking uh, Derrick Henry with Ryan Tannehill. Uh, I've been listening and researching, and guys, A.J. Brown and Julio Jones are facing a really bad secondary. Some guys, they're outweighing, like, by like 35, 40 pounds. Uh, they're going to overpower this secondary. And I can see Julio Jones or A.J. Brown or both of them just having huge games. This is a great game environment, and I definitely want to be a part of it. Then we move on to the MVP himself, Aaron Rodgers. I was pretty high on him about two weeks ago. 
but as uh, we progressed in projections and stuff, he's kind of falling off my radar a little bit. I'm going to have some pieces to him. It's an afternoon game, which sometimes those can be the most exciting ones. Um, we're not sure how this Saints offense is going to play. If if they start playing slow, I could definitely see a version of this game where it can get a little slower. But, guys, Aaron Rodgers, he's going to get us there at 6,800. He's got the passing options, stacking options, and Devontae Adams, Robert Tunyon, Randall Cobb, Aaron Jones. The list goes on. Um, great run back options with Alvin Kamara, Marquez Callaway. You got to have some pieces to this game, and I want Aaron Rodgers at 6,800. Then we move on to Russell Wilson. Here's another guy I wasn't really sure about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when we started making these videos and looking at the prices, but I've slowly started falling for Russell Wilson this week. One reason being, the Vegas point total started out at uh, 46 and a half, I believe, and now they've gotten up to 49 in the matter of like four days. This point total has just kept creeping up, and I feel really good about it. And I feel like he's Russell Wilson's gonna go overlooked, and he's somebody that you want to take advantage on, especially playing in 150s. I could even see him maybe get, sneaking them in some single entry lineups, great stacking options. There's not a lot to pick from in these stacking options. You got DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Gerald Everett. And if you want to play Dwayne Eskridge, be my guest. I kind of like him a little bit, and he's a good way to do your one uh, 3v1 stacks, that cheaper option. Then we move to Matt Ryan at 6K. I'm starting to like Matt Ryan, guys. I, I liked him before, but I'm starting to like him more. Uh, I know I said I didn't really like Kyle Pitts, but if I'm playing Matt Ryan, you got to play Kyle Pitts. He's definitely an option I want to get to at 6K. Uh, stacking options are great. Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage, uh, Kyle Pitts, just to name a few. This could be one of the best games of the uh, week, and I'm ready to get to it. Then we get on the Kirk Cousins. Great pass catchers, guys. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. You want to stack those guys with Kirk Cousins. Uh, I'm even okay with stacking Kirk Cousins with uh, Dalvin Cook. Definitely someone I want to get to. And These are my quarterbacks that I'm going to have in my tournaments. Now we move on to GPPs for running backs. The top we got Derrick Henry at 8,800. Great play, guys. Uh, if you want a run back option for Kyler Murray, Derrick Henry is your guy. Um, I really think he can get you there at 8,800. He's going to go a little lower on because you got guys like Christian McCaffrey and um, Dalvin Cook and Alvin Kamara in front of him. He's going to go a bit overlooked, and um, he could definitely get you there and DraftKings points. Now we move on to Austin Eckler at 7K. Guys, he's uh, supposedly had suffered an injury at Wednesday's practice. He's gone out on social media and said he's ready for week one. He's someone to keep an eye on in the injury reports. Check your injury reports before you start making lineups. I'm, making, I'm dropping this video Saturday, so... You guys can get an idea of what your player pool should be like. But keep an eye on this for sure. Then we move on to Aaron Jones at 6,800. Uh, I really like him. I know we discussed him in the cash game part. But he's definitely someone you want to have in your uh, cash or GPPs. Then we get on to Najee Harris, 6,300. Uh... Look, guys, he's a great run-back option. If you're playing Josh Allen stacks, you need run-back options. And Najee Harris is probably the best one um, for uh, the Steelers' side. Then we get on to Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I like Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I feel like I'm going to end up having some stacks with him and Patrick Mahomes. 
uh, eventually for my 150s. Definitely somebody you want to get a part of, guys. He's going a lot. He's going overlooked, and um, it's the highest point total game. They're favorites at home. There's no reason why Clyde edwards Laird should be going overlooked. Then we move on to Nick Chubb at 7,200. His projections are dropping. I've seen him at 16 points, and then I saw him at 15.5, and now I'm seeing him around 14.9 projection, and that's just kind of overdoing it. I I think he belongs at a uh, higher price range. Get some Nick Chubb. Then we can move on to Antonio Gibson and Chris Carson at both 5,900. Both good plays. Um, I think I prefer Carson's over Gibson. We don't know if Gibson's going to be a part of the passing game very much. I think this Curtis Samuel news could maybe get him a little more involved in the passing game. But as of right now, I'll go with Carson over uh, Gibson. And then Miles Sanders, poster boy of this slide. Uh, play some Miles Sanders, guys. If you got Matt Ryan in your stacks, roster some Miles Sanders. I think he's going to do some uh, pretty good things for us this week. Um, he's going a little bit overlooked. His projection is dropping a little bit. His ownership isn't really that high. You want to take advantage on guys like this. Miles Sanders, 6,500 is a great play. Then we move on to Raheem Mostert. Uh, their favorites, They, I think they got the highest favorite point total on the week. Uh, Raheem Mostert is as healthy as he's going to get all season long. It's time to roster some Raheem Mostert. Uh, he's definitely a Mostert at 5,800. Damian Harris, 5,200, and Melvin Gordon at 53. Um, both... Decent plays. I'd prefer Mike Davis, uh, who we discussed in uh, cash game running backs. Uh, but both these guys got some upside in their price range. Uh, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Melvin Gordon. And we move on to Trey Sermon and James White, 45 and 4,400. Trey Sermon is going to be playing behind Raheem Mostart. Uh, one reason why I put Trey Sermon in here is I think he can end up playing behind uh Raheem Mostar, he's the backup running back. Um, but once this game gets to blowout potential, you could definitely see Trey Sermon taking the snaps. That's why I got him in there. James White, he's the pass catching back for New England. Uh, I really think Mac Jones is going to be throwing a lot of short routes, and uh, that just is uh, right up uh, James White's wheelhouse. So that's why I got him being rostered. And then now Chase Edmonds at 4,600. Great stacking option for Kyler Murray. Uh, great run back option for the Titans uh, stacks. Uh, he's got some upside. He's got some passing upside, and he, he can rush the ball too. Uh, he's a little ch too cheap if you ask me at 4,600. Definitely somebody I want to get to. Kareem Hunt, hey, he's a, he's a game. Uh, he's a slate-breaking player and one play away. Very talented. Can get you there at 5,500. Great upside for week one. And then last but not least, the rookie. And the only rookie running back I have, like, super big interest in, other than Trey Sermon, is Javante Williams at 4K. Uh, he's got the upside. He can get you there. Um, he is the backup. But I think this is going to be a more of a split 50-50 role for Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. They're playing the New York Giants. Guys, I really think he's got an opportunity to prove his uh, skill set this week. And now we move on to wide receivers. Look, guys, if you like Kyler Murray, you're going to like DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, I really like DeAndre Hopkins uh, in this game environment. He should get peppered with targets. Great play. DK Metcalf. I'm starting to like Russell Wilson a lot more. I really want to get him involved. Tyreek Hill, if we're playing Patrick Mahomes, we're playing Tyreek Hill. Justin Jefferson, going a little bit overlooked in my opinion. In ownership, definitely someone I like. A.J. Brown, great option. Tyler Lockett, uh, you can pair BK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett or play Tyler Lockett with uh, one of the other options in Seattle. Uh, I think he's a great play, slate-breaking player. 
He's got great upside. Deontay Johnson, great run back option for Josh Allen stacks. Adam Thielen, 7K, another great run back option for uh, Kirk Cousins stacks. Julio Jones. Guys, Julio Jones is going overlooked. I saw him at like 2% owned this morning. I am going to roster Julio Jones. I'm definitely going to have more than 2% of Julio Jones in my 150s. Roster Julio Jones, guys. It's not rocket science. He's going to be there. He's going to break out. I like it. And then you get the Carolina Panthers duo of DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. I'm not really playing Sam Darnold, but I understand if you guys are. I do like Sam Darnold. I just couldn't get to him at that price point. Um, He's got great passing options in DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. Definitely great plays. Odell Beckham Jr. at 53, great run back option for the Chiefs. I'm interested to see what he looks like coming back from injury. Debo Samuel at 5,900, like Brandon Ayuk more, but Debo Samuel could definitely get you there. He's got a great, uh, uh, he's got a bad defense to play against and a great opportunity. Jarvis Landry, as of right now, I like Jarvis Landry more than Odell. Uh, Odell is projected higher. But in my opinion, I think Jarvis Landry is going to end up being the best receiver for the Chiefs in week one. Then we get Russell Gage, great run back option if you're uh, playing Jalen Hurts stacks and a great stacking option if you're playing Matt Ryan. Now we get on to these cheaper players. Cole Beasley, great for Josh Allen stacks. Jamar Chase. Uh, I'm not super high on him, but I will have a little bit of him and Joe Burrow stacks and run back options for the Vikings. Emmanuel Sanders at 4,200. Great play. Jerry Judy, 4,800. Devontae Smith, 4,500. Uh, definitely somebody I'm going to get to, but I'm not super high on it. Paris Campbell, 3,700. I'm really excited to play Paris Campbell. Uh, he was a great player last year. I know he's coming off. A big knee injury from last year. He got hurt in week one, I believe. Definitely want to keep an eye on him and see how he plays in his first game back. Traquan Smith, 4,900. Out of all the Saints receivers, he's probably the least I'm excited about, but I will have some pieces of him in my run back options for Aaron Rodgers. It's got to keep an eye on. Nicole Hartman, he uh, did not practice Wednesday. Um, He has a questionable tag, but he's supposed to be expected to play, but that's someone you need to keep an eye on as we're uh, headed towards Sunday. Jalen Waddle, great pivot off of guys like Marquez Callaway and Marvin Jones. Uh, he's going really overlooked. I like him as a GPP option. Definitely keep an eye out on him. Jalen Rager, in my opinion, is going to be the best receiver on the Eagles this week. Uh, Devontae Smith, the rookie. Just kind of has time to learn. Uh, I think Jalen Rager could definitely end up being the best wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles. Elijah Moore, hold up. Now this is where we're going to rank these 3K rookies real quick. Because I know everyone's just so enamored with these 3K guys and so excited to play them. So let's rank them. We got Elijah Moore. Jameson Crowder's out now. I give Elijah Moore... The number one nod out of all the 3K rookies that everyone's excited about. Then we move on to Terrace Marshall. He's taking over Curtis Samuel's passing role in Carolina. I like him next. And then you got Rondell Moore, 3K. I like him the third best. Dwayne Eskridge. I think Russell Wilson's going to get him involved. I'm pretty excited about uh, Eskridge. Then we get on to Mon St. Brown. He could be a guy that gets you garbage time points. I'm real interested to see what uh, he's going to do with his opportunities on the field. And then Byron Pringle, he's not a rookie, but he's someone I really want to talk about real quick. Showing good numbers in the projections, like uh, six and a half points, fantasy points at 3,300, that's a great value. I think they can get him involved, and I'm going to have a little bit of Byron Pringle in my Kansas City stacks. Now we move on 
to tight end. Of course, you're going to play Travis Kelsey. I really like Travis Kelsey. I like him a lot more than I like George Kittle. Um, I just don't really see myself getting to George Kittle just because I'm not really playing Garoppolo and I'm not playing really nobody from Detroit other than TJ Hawkinson. And I don't like playing double tight end in my flex. So George Kittle is someone that I could just completely fade. Uh, I don't like it, but just not getting there. Then we get to Dallas Goddard. I'm starting to like Zach Ertz a little bit more than Dallas Goddard. Uh, he's a little overpriced, uh, but I could definitely be proven wrong. I'm going to play him uh, in some lineups, but I'm just not overly excited about him. Mike Isecki, great pivot off of uh, guys like Kyle Pitts or um, Logan Thomas. He's going to get involved. There's no Will Fuller this week. Uh, so those tar that target share could go up for him a little bit. Robert Tanyan, he scored 12 touchdowns last year. With uh, the return of Randall Cobb to Green Bay, I can see that touchdown total going down a little bit. But Aaron Rodgers does make him a priority in this offense. And at 4,200, I'm definitely going to go after that. Hooper, good run back option. If you don't have Travis Kelsey in your lineup already for the Chiefs. Noah Fant, good pivot off of uh, Kyle Pitts and uh, Logan Thomas. John Smith, I like him more than Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry's been dealing with injury throughout the offseason and training camp and uh, preseason. So is John Smith, but I really like John Smith more at his price. He's the cheaper one out of the two, so I say roster John Smith. Zach Ertz, 3,800. I mentioned him uh, when we were talking about Goddard. I like him more than Goddard right now, and uh, I'm definitely going to roster me some Zach Ertz. They kept him for a reason in Philadelphia, so I'm going to roster him. Gerald Everett, great stacking option for Russell Wilson. You can pair him with DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett and feel pretty good about it. 3400 is just too cheap for this guy, and uh, Russell Wilson likes throwing to his tight ends. Then we move on to Eric Ebron at 3900 um, Not really excited to play him. I don't know if I'll even have him as a runback option uh, for my Buffalo stacks, so I'll just kind of keep him by the wayside. I'm just not too sure about him. And now we're getting to these guys where you're just kind of punting this position, and there's nothing wrong with that. Tyler Croft is probably my favorite punt play at tight end at 2,500. He's projected to score 6.8 DraftKings points. He's definitely going to meet your value at that price range. I really like him. Tyler Coughlin, they signed Chris Herndon in the, uh, when the news broke about Irv Smith Jr., R.I.P. Irv Smith, 2021. I I like Tyler Conklin. I don't know if I'm going to get to him in my Kirk Cousins stacks, but he's definitely somebody I have interest in at 2,900. Great punt play. Anthony Fersker, another great punt play. I, I think he's got a little more opportunity than uh, the guys I named ahead of him. Um, a better game environment, a higher point total game. Look out for Anthony Fersker. Adam Trotman's next, and he's somebody I had a lot of interest in uh, early. But as we uh, gotten further into the season, he dealt with some injuries. He's, he's projected to play. Uh, he's someone that's kind of fallen to the wayside. I will have him in some run back options with Green Bay, but I'm just not super excited about it. And then these are just really ultimate punt plays. If you got Russell Wilson uh, stacking options, this Moali Cox could be a decent run back option. And then Dan, Dan Arnold at 2,600. He's just a specified punt play. Sam Darnold likes tight ends, but I don't really know how much they'll use Dan Arnold in this offense. They didn't really use tight ends a whole lot last year. I expect the same. I don't really like discussing defenses, but I thought I would just for a second for you guys to break down this slate. Uh, Falcons are my favorite value defense. Then you got the Colts value. Uh, I'm really playing a lot of Colts and Falcons. I'm, that's who I'm really trying to get in there. Uh, I won't be trying to get the Jets or the Bengals in or the Lions. But I could definitely see a version where the Lions 
maybe get a couple of turnovers off of Jimmy G. Jimmy G was throwing picks in the preseason. So that's just something to keep an eye on. The Texans are facing a rookie quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. I know their defense is supposed to be bad, but hey, I mean, it's a rookie. Anything can happen there. Uh, Cardinals, 2100, I'm not really interested in, but it's a good value. Titans are a good value. Um, I don't know if they're going to get Kyler Murray to turn the ball over. Broncos at 3300 are my favorite high price defense and someone I will try to get to a little bit. Uh, I like the Vikings. They got some potential. Like I told you earlier, I'm concerned about the Vikings secondary, but their front seven and their linebackers, guys, they got something there at 3K. Dolphins at 2900 They're playing a rookie quarterback. Uh, I don't think Mac Jones is going to throw the ball a lot, but they do got a good secondary. I believe they're going to run the ball a lot, but uh, just watch out for that. I mean, they could get some uh, interceptions. They could get to them a little bit at 2900 I'll give it a try. Steelers at 2800 I like Josh Allen stacks, but, I mean, Steelers are one of the best defenses in the league. Um, I'm going to try to get to them. I don't know if I will for sure. But 2,800, I mean, they're decent. Then you got the Jaguars playing a terrible Texans offense uh, at 2,700. I think they're a team that uh, can definitely uh, make some noise. Then you get to the Buffalo Bills. I think the Steelers offense is going to be a little different than last year. Big Ben dropped back a lot. He's been dropping back a lot the last two or three years. Uh, He can get hit. He can throw interceptions. Uh, This is going to be a high-scoring total. I can see a little back and forth. I can see the Bills front seven getting to big men. Interesting uh, price point for the Bills. Those are the defenses I have interest in. Now we move on to the final lineup GPP, which y'all been waiting for. I'm doing the Josh Allen stack in this one. Uh, we still got a lot of lineups to build, but from so far from what I've built, Josh Allen, he's just looking good, guys. I really like this stack here, too. Josh Allen, Emmanuel Sanders, Stephon Diggs. You run it back with Deontay Johnson. Then you get Christian McCaffrey. I really like Christian McCaffrey, and you're pairing him up with Josh Allen. That just looks awesome. Aaron Jones, and you got a little mini stack with Aaron Jones and Marquez Callaway, and you also got a little mini stack with Tyler Croft because the Jets are playing the Panthers, but Christian McCaffrey. Mini stacks are key when you're building these big 3v1 stacks. So definitely keep that in mind. Mini stacks are very important. I discussed that in the video I made last week. But, uh, yeah, this uh, lineup ends up coming out to a total projected point total of 142.2. And optimizers, that's a good thing to see. Ownership on these guys looks pretty good. Um, But, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, This is the final looks. I'm dropping this Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. Uh, If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you like this video and you like the info that you got, Drop a like and a subscribe, and uh, let's cash, guys. Let's have some fun. This is all about having fun. You got to play smart, but also remember, have fun. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.